Hey guys, we're going to do a, a pretty interesting tutorial now um, where we create a minimalist movie poster. Now this is a project that I do in my Fundamentals of Graphic Design class um, and it gives students an opportunity to um, create posters that deal with a cool subject like a movie. They can take any movie but that it's under the filter of minimalism, right? Sort of stripping down all the excessive elements that you would find in a poster and um, you know, really letting simplicity reign. So we're going to um, create one right now. And uh, what I really love about this project is that it gives students an opportunity to experiment with um, textures, right? And really sort of taking simplicity and then giving it a bit of a, of a feel, a grain that makes the poster much more interesting than just being solid fields of color, uh, simple sans serif typography, and simple imagery. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a poster for The Pit and the Pendulum, right? The Edgar Allan Poe novel. So um, what I like to do sort of first is start off with just populating the space with elements. So in our case, we're just going to right now build a, a color field, and I'm going to put a nice sort of, you know, gothic purple in here. All right, and then we're going to set some copy. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so there's a nice bleed. Okay, and we're going to set some copy. And also in this project, I like to teach my students about something called a scaled justification, which is a type treatment that's a lot of fun. So I'm going to show you how to do that here now. So we're going to say the pit and the pendulum. All right, and that's really tiny, sorry. So we're going to zoom that up. Just did a center scale. And it's not very exciting right now, and it's set in Myriad Pro. So that's, uh, you know, not that great. All right, so to get a scale justification going, what I want to sort of think about is that um, we're going to justify it. That's the sort of justification there. Justified is, you know, a line left and a line right type. And we're going to use scaling of the text in order to get it to justify. So um, you've seen this before, and I think towards the end you'll get a real sense of what it is. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to center this typography. I'm going to use the align center um, little button here that's at the top. Sorry you can't see it, but it's in your Illustrator. And I'm going to now play with the type so that there's sort of this invisible thing. And what I'm going to do for for my first time around is I'm going to do Command R, which will turn on the rulers. And you can see here that like I have now rulers on the left and the right. And what I'm going to use them for is I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to create a guided left and right margin. Okay, so I'm going to get all the type to fit inside of this location. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this word pendulum. Okay, and I'm going to shrink down. Let me get a little window open here. Type character. Okay, I'm going to shrink down the type little by little until the P and the M in pendulum are within the boundaries of that justification. So do you see how now I'm scaling in order to justify? Okay. And one thing that I do need to do is it's helpful to get rid of all the spaces, especially with line returns, okay? Because then there isn't these sort of phantom extra things around. And now with that in mind, I'm going to scale up here, and I'm just going to kern slightly tighter there. Well, I like it the other way. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to now increase the scale of the pit. So that way the, and, uh, the T on the and the T ending pit touch the edges okay and it's really it's you know it's close enough for us that it's gonna really work out also I really don't want to use myriad pro regular so I'm gonna look for bold condensed which really changes up the whole ball game here which isn't bad so um, what I can do though is I can sort of reposition this guide so that it fits in the space just as long as I achieve the justification it's fine I can always scale this as a block of type and also I didn't mention is that this is a single line type. It's not an area type tool. We don't need area type, okay, for this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and the, and I'm going to select the line, and I'm going to put my finger on the option key, excuse me, and I'm going to lead the type up. So good leading is a really important part of scale justification. Okay, so there you go. That's scale justification. It looks nice. All right. I'm going to kill these guides. We'll kill the rulers first, and then I'm going to go guides, hide guides, because I don't need them anymore. And black against this purple isn't looking so great, so I'm just going to make that type white. Okay. All right. So 
this is just one trick, right? You don't have to make every minimalist movie poster do this, but it's a nice way to take a simple title and treat it so that it looks interesting. All right, now in minimalism, we need to come up with sort of like a single image or a single iconic visual that's going to really help us sum up the movie. So for this example, it might not be the best, okay, but we're going to make a pendulum. All right, and the pendulum sort of this weird knife that like swings back and forth, you know, taunting its uh, its victims until they die. Um, and that's uh, typical in Poe fashion. So we're going to bring the stroke palette over here, and we're going to make a white line there. And I'm going to play with color on this too, so nothing's set in stone. And then I'm going to make the knife of the pendulum, which is really just going to be a semicircle. So I'm going to make a circle shape and I'm center scaling here so that way it's easy to drop it right on the center and then I'm going to use the white arrow to select the top quadrant of the circle really the top half and I'm going to hit delete okay and I selected the the point right and that allowed me to get rid of two lines and then I'm going to use my trusty pen tool to complete the shape and that gives me now this sort of semi-circle knife shape which is really cool Okay, so if you're a Poe fan, let me make this a little thicker, you would sort of know from the Roger Corman movie with Vincent Price from the 60s that this is sort of what it looked like, the knife. Okay, now the illustrator in me is like, you know, make shading and all this great stuff. And I'm going to do a little sort of simple minimalist shading, but this is good enough to get started. Now I've selected both the line, the sort of the the, the staff or the, the boom that this knife is on and then also the knife itself and I'm going to do command G which groups them and then for a little bit of dynamism here just to make it a little more interesting I'm going to rotate the shape so it sort of gives it the impression like it's swinging right and that's kind of fun and cool now maybe I'll do this just because I've been print making lately I'm going to um, put my finger on the option key and then copy select to make a duplicate copy and I'm just going to put this sort of slightly behind this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this background one with the transparency palette. I'm going to make it just like a little bit lighter. And what that's going to do is it's going to make like a little bit of an echo effect. Okay. So now this looks like it's sort of like moving a little bit, which is fun. Okay. I could use Photoshop to make it more, but there we go. Okay. Maybe one more for effect. We'll copy, drag this one, rotate it back a little bit more, lower it again. Okay, I may have done it a little too much there, but this is looking pretty good so far. Okay, so we've got, yeah, cool. All right, so there we go. Pit in the pendulum, all right, nice minimal effect. All right, now what I'm going to teach you here now is two approaches to adding stress or vintaging or antiquing um, an image so that it really has, you know, that sort of, um, the cool thing in minimalism now is to be minimal, but then to also sort of age it so it looks like it's, you know, minimalism that we found on the shelf and the paper's degraded and all that stuff. So we're going to try darkening this with what's called grunge, and then we're going to lighten it with what's called dandruffing. Okay, that's sort of a... Uh, you know, a, a nomenclature term for what that is. And that adds a little bit of white distressing. And that's sort of what you get. Like if you've got a paperback book that's been on the shelf or a record album that's been in a crate for too long, you pull it out, all that rubbing over the years wears away the ink and reveals the white paper underneath. So here we go. So I so, just so happen to have a uh, texture um, already built in on layers here. All right, and there it is. It's a vellum paper texture, but let me show you a little secret here. If you pull open a window, you can go to this great website, Lost and Taken. Okay. Lost and Taken is pretty rad because it has free and premium textures built into it. So if you go to Lost and Taken here, you can see that you can sort of scroll through and you can get in the gallery, there's like some groovy stuff to look through. Okay, so as you can see, there's some damask patterns here, some paper patterns. So this is really like up to you, you know, sort of what you want to look for. And some of these are really creepy and groovy. All right, for my example today, and you just click on it and you get this high res texture, which you can then just save to your desktop and download. So this is like no joke. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this one. Right, we'll skip the one we use. So I'm going to do copy image. 
get rid of this here. Okay, and then I'll erase the one I have. And then I'm going to paste in front, and you'll see the texture is going to be gigantic, okay, because it is, in fact, high resolution, which is great. And now I can scale this down so that it fits. And that allows us now to you know, have get the total texture in there and have a nice look and feel. Now it just so happens that I have, let me close these extra palettes because I'm not doing any more type. It just so happens that I have my transparency palette open and I'm going to select my texture. And now in transparency are, you know, basic blending modes. And right now it's set to normal. And some of us may have learned that we can use opacity to sort of do that. And you get a nice instant effect. But, but, let's make this 100 again. Let's see what blending modes give us. All right. Now, I really like to use just these first three banks of three, so these nine um, blending effects, and they do different things. So the first bank deals with darkening the image. So if we go to darken, ooh, we get that nice effect, right, where the dark parts of the image really saturate. So this is like a burning effect, which I really appreciate. Look at that, right? That's a different look and feel. Multiply. Here's what color burn does. That's a little groovy. Okay, now lighten is a different bank. Lighten sort of takes the light parts of the image, still the texture, but it makes it more towards um, a, a brighter, more to, uh, white um, sort of point in the, the color mixing palette. Get screen, color dodge. All right, and now this one is overlay, which is sort of like an even blending. And overlay does some nice things. Soft light, and then lastly, hard light, okay, which is like regressive. And then these other ones are cool, but they do more negative effects and things like that. It might not be sort of what it is that we're really looking for. Well, that's kind of nice. But I encourage you to experiment because you may find something in here that really works and life is good. But I have great success with the ones at the top. And I was most happy with overlay. Okay, it just sort of uh, suited what it was that I was doing. All right, so now what you can see is that my type and the background sort of have a nice look and feel. You know, come to think of it, let me see if there's anything else, because I really would like to see the type. Okay, the type pick up some of the color, which could be really nice. So again, play, see what comes up, see what works. All right, it might be that none of these work. Okay, all right, so that's cool. That's looking good. So this is an example of how you can sort of take a texture and then burn it into the background. And essentially, here it is. You have now a minimalist movie poster, which is kind of nice. Okay. I lost my echoing effect in there, so this might not be the one. I can see now how that gets sacrificed. There we go. Okay. We'll stick with overlay, my original choice. All right. So I can print this. Because the texture is high res, it's going to look good when you print it out as a JPEG. And you've got a nice look and feel here. So things are cool. Okay. All right. Now let's try the second technique. The second technique, as I mentioned, is something called dandruffing. And they call it dandruff because it adds white on top of something. And dandruffing is meant to mimic the effect that occurs when paper has been rubbed so much with friction that it wears away the ink down to the white. Okay? All right. So, you know, we might be able to achieve dandruffing with this texture, so I'm going to try it. So I'm going to just reset it back to normal. And now dandruffing requires that we um, group a shape or anything that you want to dandruff and then the texture itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a box around just the top right hand corner and I'm going to grab both the texture and my purple background. Okay. And then in the transparency palette also there's this little pop down menu on the top right hand corner. Okay. It's a down arrow with four lines. And when I pop it down, there's this fun little option here. It says Make Opacity Mask. This is the way you can do sort of like blending um, with transparency like you can in Photoshop. It's a little bit sort of different in Illustrator because Illustrator is object-based and Photoshop is layer-based, but it's similar effects, okay? All right, so if I do click Make Opacity Mask, what ends up happening is I get this, now this built-in sort of thing where you can see I have now my original image and then I can click on my... Um, my texture as well. And then there are a few other options because this is sort of negative looking. Um, you can come in and click invert mask and then you get this nice sort of staining effect, okay, which brings out the the whites in, in what it is that you're working with, okay. So this is sort of very simple, right, and it's really nice. You get some some groovy effects. You can see that the 
the white is definitely wearing into the space, all right? And this is like way cooler than just flat color, okay? In my opinion, of course. Um, so that's, that's that, right? That is just using the opacity mask to make that happen, okay? One last time, we'll, we'll sort of release the opacity. I'm going Command-Z back to normal. Group selection with two objects, the color and then that. Notice I have the texture in, in front. It really sort of doesn't matter. In fact, well, let me test that theory before I tell you. Arrange, bring to front. Oh, this is on another layer. All right, well, just for the sake of experiment with that, but I have the texture in front, group selection, and then I go pop down menu in the transparency palette, make opacity mask. Make sure you guys can see that. Make opacity mask. Okay, notice it sort of takes on that look and feel. Now, because I brought this to the front, it's covering my type. Let me click Invert Mask to get the different sort of dandruffing effect, and then I'm going to take this whole thing and send it to back, so that way my type shows up again. Okay, so there it is. I've now got my Pit in the Pendulum minimalist movie poster. It's a very simplistic approach to how this is. Obviously, you can probably do some really groovy things. Experimenting with textures, experimenting with blending modes, with uh, darkening and things like that really takes this to 11, but this is a basic about how you can approach the uh, minimalist movie poster. Now, when you're done, I would encourage you to open up a browser and look for the minimalist movie poster Tumblr page because there's this great Tumblr page. Obviously, you can see a bunch of right there. So here it is, minimalmovieposters.tumblr.com. Go to it and look at what is there, but they have this section here where you can submit. All right, you can see also people buy the posters. You go to submit, and then you can fill out this form and upload. Read the terms of submission, please, because you know there may be something in here about consignment or taking a cut. I'll leave that up to you to read and check out. All right, but that you can submit this here, and if it gets accepted, it gets put on the website. Okay, my students have had success showing their work here and getting accepted. I've had three students so far get their work accepted and you add to the giant pool of minimal movie posters. It's a big trend right now, but this tutorial and this um, uh, technique really takes you through seeing how you can sort of do the scale justification, thinking in minimal terms and how you would approach an idea like a movie, which is tough to do. You have to really sort of get into it. And then lastly, playing with two texturing effects. One is just using blending modes with a photo-based texture that we got from Lost and Taken and then using the dandruff effect, which allows us to experiment with the opacity mask, okay, which is something that you see here inside of the transparency palette. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and good luck making your minimalist movie poster.